Hi guys and how's it going? I figured today I would make a video on some of the stuff I'm seeing online that is absolutely just teaching people the wrong things. And I think we're going to just talk about this stuff as we see it and uh, do a little commentary on some of these shorts and videos that I've been watching that just basically show you the opposite of what you should do. And uh, people are liking it. I mean, you look at the comments on this video and this guy says, what do you say? Wow, dude, that's awesome. Okay. <laughs> well, that's my comment. <laughs> Basically, this guy right here, let's watch, rolls out this whole area with one dip. What do you guys think is wrong with that? Let's see your comments below. Plus, he's going so fast, he's rolling right over the switch plates. Wonderful. I just love that. Anyway. Let's back up. Here's the beginning. He takes a, a wet roller and W's out the wall, which is normally what you do when you do a section. You don't do the whole wall like that, with the, even with an 18. So first of all, he's using an 18 inch roller. Um, and you can see how wide those cuts are. Uh, you spend that much time cutting in and uh, you, you've just wasted about half your day cutting in all that. When you could make a real little two inch cut, use a nine inch roller and uh, go around everything in there. You wouldn't need to use your seven inch like he's doing when he's doing the cut in. They don't show that part because it's definitely very slow going. And the second thing is, is when you don't dip your roller like that and you push on it to try and get everything out of it. Um, what's happening is that's just ruining that roller's spring tension and it's not able to pick up paint the next time you go roll with it. So what happens is by the end of the day, if you keep pushing your roller like that, um, you, you actually are holding and releasing less paint by doing that. So it's better to dip your roller, okay, and actually release the paint onto the wall and dip it again. So like the first couple times you dip your roller, you need to go and only go a very short period. Of, and, and so to get the roller really sopping, what I'll do is I'll do like two or three feet with the roller. I, I use a nine inch, so it's still a little different. Um, but you dip in, you dip your roller in, you go ahead and, and, and take it just a short little bit dip it again, do a short little bit, dip it again, do a little short little bit. And once your roller is making this noise that he's, his roller's making, that sounds dry like that, you've gone too far. You're ready to dip it again. So if you keep your roller really wet like that, it actually holds and releases more paint uh, and you'll get a lot more mileage. That's why guys, a lot of guys will use it 18 inch roller because they think, wow, um, you know, it goes a lot further, but it, it really doesn't. If you, if you take a nine inch and you keep loading it and loading it and loading it and getting it really sopping wet and don't push on the roller and let the roller re release onto the wall, you're going to get a lot more mileage out of that dip. After a few dips and you get down the wall, you start, it starts keeping that roller nice and wet. That's the trick is, is to take it less far. As soon as it starts to make that noise, this, you've gone too far. So keep that roller nice and wet. You'll get a lot more out of it that way. Uh, plus, when you're rolling this fast, you're just basically... You know, that, that baseboard right there, even though it has tape on it, it's probably got paint all over it. The other thing is the wall. Uh, the uh, wall is just entirely covered in cat eyes, which is where the paint's not covered. But in the video, you really can't see it. It just looks like, wow, it went from one color to another color. You know, painting this fast, you know, doesn't help you. It really doesn't. But if you see how this roller is right here, if he stopped right there and dipped it, and then before he started rolling, dipped it again, and then dipped it again, it would be covered probably in one coat. Now, all that has to get coated, coated again at least. Um, and then plus those wide 9, 18 inch rollers. Let's talk about that. 
Those wide 18 inch rollers, a lot of times they have voids in the middle of the roller and you always should when you roll uh, overlap 50% of what you just did. And he's overlapping like 75 to make it go fast. So the coverage is not gonna be very good. That whole thing, that whole wall is just, that's basically a prime coat. But now his rollers nap down. So, you know, when he goes to roll it again, the, the roller's not gonna hold as much paint. So he's wasted time on the second coat. So it looks great on video. And you know, it looks like, wow, look at, he covered the whole wall in just a two couple of seconds. I mean, he's just like really fast. There's probably paint on the ceiling too, because he's rolling so fast. So anyway, it doesn't pay to, to, to roll fast, that fast. Um, just keep yourself an even keel, plus you're going to wear yourself out. Uh, we'll talk about the, that in his next little clip here. I don't know if this is the same guy. I guess it's a different guy. I've seen that guy in a couple of videos. But first of all, what is he doing wrong? Okay, you guys, he's spraying up and down. Uh, look at look at how far down. When he bends all the way down, look at his back. Okay, if you do that for very long, uh, and I'm talking about you might get it through a few jobs or a couple of years that way, but if you do that all the time, your back is going to be bad. And you're going to be old, and you're not going to be able to work anymore. And you're going to be grabbing on social assistance, and uh, you know because you can't work anymore. So, or you'll be doing something, a desk job, or whatever. So, holding, having your tip turned that direction is not the way the gun was really designed. That was for certain situations, and we'll talk about that as we're looking at this. But having your gun spray up and down, the only time that I will ever do that, and is when I'm on a commercial wall and there's nothing in there, the whole thing's completely covered, there's no T-bar, there's no nothing in there at all, and I'll have a pole gun on there so that I'm not bending my back like that, okay? Uh, back bent bending is just what's just, I see totally wrong. Some guys are saying that his pressure's too low. Uh, that little bit of uh, uh, fan edge you're seeing there, is fine. That's not an issue. A lot of guys are saying, you know, his pressure's too low. Or he's got fingers in it. No, that's not. That's not an issue with that at all. Um, uh, but maybe his tip's blown out. That's probably because he's using a reverse tip, and uh, they always leave a little fingery edge like that. So it's one of the reasons I don't use them. Once you blow out a flat tip a little bit more, it'll come out a little better. But anyway, by commercial wall, so you have the room all the way empty, you have no T-bar in, there's nobody, no other trades there, you cover your whole body up, you cover your head up, you cover your, just kind of look like this guy is right here, uh, and you cover yourself all up, and you get yourself a pole gun, and you get your, you know, 90, 100, 120 gallons of paint, and uh, you just turn up your pressure, put an 823 on there, and uh, just coat the wall. And usually what I'll do is I'll have a guy behind me back rolling because we're just putting a prime coat on the walls and we're just going to go at it. And then I'll go through with the same 823. I'll put a second coat on the walls and then we'll let the trades go and put their T-bar in and all the other stuff and then come back and roll the whole place out. So... Uh, and that's the way we usually do those type of things. The, the T bar when it's all empty, then I'll use, then I'll spray up and down. So what I'm trying to say is I won't spray side to side because I got a roll guy right behind me with a roller chasing me down, and uh, I'm using like a big, t you know, a pretty good size tip, a 823 with enamel. That's definitely a big tip, but you definitely get overspray everywhere when you do that. But you're not worried about it. The grounds, you know. It, there's no carpet, there's nothing in the building, there's, it's not occupied, there's, you know, all it is is just open wall and T-bar, and you're just putting on paint, you know, you're just getting the walls coated so that the next coat, you won't have to cut in, okay, the next time you're going to go through there after, car, you know, right before carpet, or just after carpet, but before base, uh, and you're going to roll another coat on, you're going to fix all the little nicks from the guy bumping the wall, the little triangles, you ever done that, uh, from the, the guy bumping the walls with the uh, T-bar, they always seem to hit their scaffolding on the wall, it makes it a little, little triangle thing, and uh, you know, you'll go around and fix all that, or you, you 
your uh, drywall art, go fix it, and then you go back through, coat all your patches and repaint it. That's the only time you'll spray up and down. This guy here is killing his body right now. So, yeah, it just, you know, it just looks good on video because, yeah, it looks like, wow, he just painted a whole room in a couple minutes and, you know, it's just basically entertainment. It's not, it's not the right way to do the job, guys. So, I mean... So this is the problem I have with these videos is it gives people the wrong impression of what you're supposed to do. And, uh, you know, it's not teaching anyone anything. It's just entertainment. You know, it's just a, wow, look how quickly it goes. It just comes on there really quick. It doesn't, uh, doesn't help anybody learn anything. So anyway, and that's not what my channel is about. I'm trying to teach people how to paint the right way. Uh, there's another few others that are out here that don't really do that and they're in it for the the YouTube money to get rich on YouTube and not really trying to uh, teach the trade the proper way so anyway there's that video and then there's people like this one you know I mean yeah she's cutting in a straight line it's female obviously look at the hand and uh, using the wrong tool and look at how oh there goes the brush it's already dried out you should have dipped it right then See how that brush just got dry? And now that's such a, that's such a dry cut right there. Um, it's probably not going to get covered in one coat. You're going to have to go back and do it another one. So she's putting on the paint too dry for a cut in. You know, uh, when you're using the wrong tool, you know, it's going to take longer. If she just used a, a three inch a straight brush, you know, back when I was younger and I had. I was in a production crew where we had a 20-man crew, and the 20-man crew made uh, the boss about $4 million a year. Um, it, it, you know, if we did this, this is so dry, this is so dry, she needed to stop and dip the brush way before then. And this is a mistake a lot of painters make. They just smear paint with a brush. You need to be dipping the brush a lot, Okay. When you you don't want your brush too wet when you're doing your very at your edge, but when you're doing this part right here, when you get to the point where you want to put the paint on to cover, you need to have that brush wet. Look at that; it is just so dry. You know, it's just like you know, yeah, it looks great on video, you know, and, and she has nice hands, you know, whatever. But you know, it's just you know, it's just not the right way, and that that, that whole area is all full of cat eyes. I can see it. Um, it's just not good. So yeah, and using the right tool guys, it, you guys haven't, haven't done this before. When, when I was younger, my boss had one kind of brush in our, in our tools. It was either you had a brush or a sash tool. This is a sash tool. And if I picked up a sash tool, my boss would go, go, can you go get a brush and, and paint this stuff? And if I picked up a sash tool, he would scream at me. He would scream at me. Why are you picking up a sash tool? I said, get a brush. And then what a brush was is a four inch by one inch block brush. That's all we had. We had for commercial work. That's all we had was a four inch by one inch block. Okay. And yeah, your wrist at the end of the day would hurt. You know, so when I get a little older, I, I don't use those anymore. Um, but that's what we used for years. And you got, and you think, oh, well, you, you're going to be slow with that thing. No, no, it, it takes one or two dips, you know, to do your whole ladder set. Well, your ladder setting to do one whole area with that one inch by four inch block, you barely need to dip it twice. And that was it. It had plenty of paint on that brush. It would just, you could get a lot of paint with one dip, you know, because every time you reach from here, and you go down to your bucket and you go back up here, you spent time, okay? And some guys are like, well, what does it matter if you spent time? It's look, there's two things you need to do as a painter. One is you need to manage your time because your time is what makes you money. If you can produce more in the same period of time, uh, then you're going to make more money, right? So that's what it's all about. You're in business to make money. It's not just being good. You need to be both. You need to be very good. You need to have nice straight lines. Okay, painting a straight line is only part of it. You also have to be really, really good at being fast as well. So you want to be fast and do really perfect work. 
And the way you do that is use the proper tools. Uh, that's going to help you, one. Uh, number two is you just got to be good. You just got to spend the time using those tools and, uh, you know, dip your brush more, you know. I see this is a big mistake a lot of guys make. They, they will not dip their brush enough and then uh, they've got to go through and, and recut. So that second time that she went over that, okay, when she did the cut in, second time she should have dipped it two or three times. Two or three times and then face that all off with the flat end of the brush. Whereas you can't really do that with a cut with an angle tip. That's where you run into a problem with an angle tip. If she used a regular straight cut brush, she would go through here with the brush going this way, not this way. Okay? With the brush going this way and put a nice heavy light tipped coat on there where you don't push on the brush, you put it on really light tipped. And then it would be covered in one coat. And so now she's got to go do two. Uh, so, yeah. It looks good on camera. Not the proper way to do it. Now this guy seems to, you know, he's definitely self-taught. Everything's done with a pole gun. There's, he's, so he's got a pole gun, okay? And he's got an extension on a shield. What a complete waste of time is that? If he had a handgun, he could hold the shield... In his other hand, he wouldn't need that extension. So now you've got time spent putting that extension on your shield, and you've got time spent, and you have less control because you've got that tip way out far from your hand. When if he just had it, he wouldn't be triggering all that. That could have been done all in one shot with a handgun. It just uh, makes no sense to me. See all that extra triggering he's doing there? It's just... I mean, yeah, he's trying to keep it off of something, whatever. Trying to keep it from hitting the walls. But it's blowing underneath that shield. <laughs> I guarantee you. The way he's holding that. There's definitely uh blow through. He's got touch up on both ends of that. It's not helping him save any time. Um, you know... If you're going to do it that way, uh, typically what I'll do is uh, just mask the whole jam off and just shoot it all and be done with it. It's going to take you really no time at all just to get the paper machine out, cover the whole jam, put a 2 211 tip on there, use a handgun, and just shoot it. And, and you know, and you're going to have to keep your overspray from hitting the ceiling, so you're going to have to have, I would use two shields together and hold them together. And get rid of this stupid shield extension. Get rid of the pole. And just do it by hand. You know, he's not that short. I mean, he can reach that top of that jam. I don't understand. Well, this guy has a YouTube painting channel. And he likes to teach painting. And he's totally self-taught. I can tell. The way he's painting, he would he would have been fired the first day working on the job with my with the guys I work with. Who were high-level production guys. You know, these, this guy made... Four million dollars a year uh, with a 20-man crew back in the 70s and 80s okay so if you know it, that's a lot of money back then okay and today you know he's gone now but you know, he was a great teacher great boss as you know he was hard on everybody but man you learned really well from him so Anyway, I, I just don't see any, any time saving. I don't see anything right about that. Um, it's just all weird. What do you guys think on that? What do you think about about a guy using a pole gun to paint a door jam like that? It's got a swivel on there. It's got extra overspray because of that. Uh, maybe it doesn't have a swivel. But he's also doing the... He likes to spray the wrong direction. So, poor guy's going to have a bad back. Pretty young in life. So, anyway, well, he probably doesn't need it now because he's got a big YouTube channel and that's really where he makes his money. He's not a not painting to make money. Neither am I anymore, you know. I'm pretty, almost retired, so. Anyway. So, this is just fun. I just watch this and I kind of go, wow. This is the next gen. Being taught by YouTube how to paint. So, at least this guy's showing you how to back up your brush into a corner. But he's still using an angle. 
you still need to dip his, his brush if you see here it dries out and he just works it the other way um, brush is already too dry should have dipped again went back up there and hit it again not, not too bad but you know but at least he's showing you how to back your brush up into the corner that's what you do with a straight brush looks like it's an angle that he's using oval angle I didn't know they made an oval angle okay so a lot of people ask me about anyway pretty good I mean not terrible nothing really totally wrong with that one again it's teaching people this kind of thing here got another guy painting up and down you know it's either God is this paint like really really thin or is he just like using a really small tip and have it way over pressurized you know it just so you know I would I just never would I need to paint that slow I'd be going up and down that wall a lot faster if I was doing it but I wouldn't be going up and down either guys you know that I'd be going side to side so your body motion is better you know, I don't know what they're afraid of. You know, I think they're probably a lot of guys because they use too much pressure or too little pressure. If you go up and down a wall like that, um, what happens is you don't really notice the striping. So when you're going this way, some guys will, you know, not want to go this way because, you know, they have their pressure up too high and they're overlapping and they've got heavy spots in the wall because they've got the pressure up too high or too low. And you can see the striping from the uh, stuff. And, you know, it's just, that's probably what they're trying to cover up. When they could just learn to work that knob and turn the pressure down or up and get it the proper pressure. And then they wouldn't have to need to go up and down like this. So, and you notice his uh, paint's atomizing pretty well, coming off the edges of the fan, going through the fan. But it just looks like it's a really small tip. For going that do, to doing that slow, you know, you could use a larger tip and get a lot more, a uh, lot more out of, of what you're doing for the same time. You know, you could probably run through that room a lot quicker. Brand new construction, yeah, you know, you could put on the paint this way or whatever. But I still, again, wouldn't be going up and down, I'd be going side to side. You know, you could go through there and turn the pressure up or whatever, and. Put on your pole gun and just blast a coat on you know if it's completely no jams in it you're just putting a prime coat on that's when you want to use that thing so anyway well, i might even do that on i don't do any new construction like that so but uh, if i was doing that it looks like a, actually it looks like an office now that i'm looking at it i can't really tell what's around him uh, if it's an office and you're using smooth wall like that, that's when I would get, get the pole gun out and I would probably go up and down with a pole and have a guy chase me with a roller and, you know, put that roll coat on and then get a couple coats on the wall, then go back and roll it the final, final one coat over the patches, one coat over the uh, whole area to cover up all the trades mess, you know, and then be done with it, so... Anyway, that's just a few videos I saw. I just thought I'd, uh, you know, I just kind of scrolling through a few of them. And I really, you know, I watch almost every one of them. I just don't see very much being done right. So it scares me that the next gen is just not learning how to do this trade. So anyway, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Hope you enjoyed this and hopefully it helped you learn how to paint better. Talk to you next one. Please like, share, and subscribe.